Mm. I think it was one of those wonderful things where you go in not really knowing. I knew it wouldn't be ordinary. I knew it wouldn't be a standard conference. There were enough kind of clues there about um, gorillas and silly ideas and um, and speed dating and doing things differently that I had absolutely no idea what it was going to be, but I knew it was going to be something a little bit different. It's been really interesting at the conference to see uh, all walks of life talk about their approaches to art. There does seem to be a general consensus, like a concern about what it means to be an artist in this day and age and whether or not is actually a helpful term to call yourself an artist, whether that inhibits or actually helps you progress. The interest for me is the discussion of economy um, and the arts. It's like going to an amusement park where the rides are uh, for artists. <laughs> so it, it is a very healthy discussion, the discussion of business in uh, the arts. And it's a discussion that people are afraid of. It's using a practice which I think is quite exciting where there aren't any hierarchies and, and you know the artists, performers, promoters are kind of all are all kind of work together basically. And the people are all empowered to create their own topics. Um, today we had the foot and the pineapple and with the sweet smell of success we are a big corporation called Bioorganism Substrate Industries. We sponsor all sorts of events such as this and we harvest stories of success. And once we know where there's enough, a conglomeration of a high density of success levels, then we go there with a laboratory. Today's event and uh, sent me an email and said, okay, Dan, so we're doing this conference and it's going to be around zombies and what zombies can teach the arts. Was, was, I had this um, picture um, of, of Frankenstein. Now, for any uh, major zombie heads, I appreciate that Frankenstein isn't actually a zombie. Okay, I know that. Technically speaking, he's not a zombie. But he is, I think, Frankenstein's monster is, however, I think, a fully paid up member of Team Undead. And that's why I use him. Because he, for me, this guy is where we are all right now. Control people, which of course is uh, largely what they are. How much people value culture and, um, and how much people want culture. Slightly shifting and they're not quite the same thing. So, and I think it's going to be one of the big tensions over the next 10 years, particularly as the funding cuts kick in more. Uh, is do we, you know, do we stand up for ourselves and say this is valuable and it's worth it, or do we maybe look at what we're doing and say why isn't it valuable? So what this makes me think of is that in the 21st century, now that we have technologies which allow us to make, make something powerful and you can make it, uh, you can distribute it to millions of people. It doesn't have to be something that you stand in front of in an institution for 20 minutes to make things which are meaningful and beautiful. Then art, as far as we knew it, as far as I'm concerned, is dead. Gone. No longer exists. So then my question to you is, where were you when art died? would you even define the arts? I wouldn't consider myself an artist if I hadn't started. And more and more people are getting an opportunity to experience culture in, in forms that perhaps they, they wouldn't have beforehand. The thing is, I'm not a massive fan of the zombie genre per se, but it's such an accessible genre. So they, they come on board, they trade one day of chasing people through the city for one day of actually playing it. And that's amazing for an arts project to bring oh, in 1,200 volunteers and somewhere in the region of 20,000 paying customers per year. This is zombie school. This is where we actually train our, our performers. And they learn to become a zombie, uh, which, is, which is great. Look at him go, zombies taking part in the event, doing selfies. Your patrons can engage with your product and actually create your advertising for you. Embrace that flexibility and being able to tell stories set maybe within the same universe or stories of themes and allow people to interact with them in their preferred medium, which is perhaps very expensive. We offer an opportunity for people to kind of strange thing of like the rich being chased through the street. The Yellow Brick started with the idea of uh, community engagement, one funded by ourselves and Arts Council. 
Uh, we meet characters on blogs, uh, Twitter, through his notebook, through audio stories, emails, text messages with the audience to sell tickets for this. So this stuff is all free and it drives people to this. There's this still a bit of a romantic idea, um, but with digital and new types of technologies, projects are becoming expensive, you know, and they're becoming ever more complicated and they need bigger teams um, and they need more people. So I think that's you know, why it's changing. List four things I think the, uh, the arts could learn from zombies. Uh, if, you, if you think of zombies, you instantly know the rules, you instantly know the world, and you understand the, the world that exists. Understanding what consequences and decisions people would make. So have an idea of where people are, what they're doing, and kind of interact with their lives. We do need money to build things. After the first time, when you kind of have had two months of working on something, throw up in the bathroom because you're so tired, you kind of need help. So do think of money. It's been that people are discussing the idea of making money and becoming sustainable to allow them to do what they really want rather than what they have to do to live. It's one of the projects that we've been working on um, in, in the UK, in Brazil, in East Asia, which we call Playable City. City is kind of our response to this narrative of smart cities. Thinking about efficiencies, thinking about the most friction-free way we can architecture our cities to get from A to B quicker or better or somehow kind of smooth out the lines of our lives. And we hold in, an interest in the fact that that may be not the only way to live. It's not maybe the best way to live. In how we can enable people to transform their cities in ways that maybe aren't that smart, that may be more about play and playfulness. The relationship that um, the Brasileños that I met had with public space was really different because they're so used to um, a kind of a carnival culture that doesn't exist as much in Europe or at least in the UK, um, that being outdoors, being quite kind of fluid with their approach to space, seem to come more easily, even though they have much more kind of politically contested public and private spaces in the brief. In that same space. The experience on the street. The uh, sort of grounding idea for shadowing, we think we're embracing that idea of allowing art to be part of the city through the streets by zombies or being accompanied through your, the pool of light by the shadow of someone who walked there before you. This, this is possible and it's everywhere and it's up to us to do it. Thank you. You know, one public fund is not the same as another one, one private partner is not the same as another one. In my experience, it's been better to be really um, confident and bold and ambitious with your idea and then to try and work out who the appropriate partners are that can help you to develop that idea. And if they're kind of integral to the work, then it kind of doesn't matter whether they're public or private or cultural or commercial. If they're the right partner to work with you, then you'll both enjoy working together. Because the thing about Hula Hoop, uh, other than the fact that it really, it's a really powerful tool for connecting your mind and your body, uh, become uh, more and more interested in the social implications of this um, and the fact that it can create amazing community and connection like when you put people at the center of something. In my uh, perspective as a Brazilian, uh, I, I, I'm, I'm an entrepreneur, like I like doing things, I like building things so that you can make the rules and I think uh, this is something that public funding um, often doesn't let you do poses many questions, uh, especially regarding certain types of work which wouldn't as easily be privately funded or profitable. An example of that, which I find uh, very relevant, and it comes from Brazil, is Tecnobrega, which has um, like electronic dance music and Embrega, which is really romantic, uh, super saccharine uh, romantic music. It's possibly the only genre of electronic music that you can dance to cheek to cheek. Uh, have a ride from this. But when this happened, the media was uh, deliberately ignoring it. It's not that they didn't know, like it wasn't a big secret. The, in the peripheries, it has never been a secret. It's just that people discounted it because they thought it was like vulgar and mm, that is not up to our standards.